Hey everybody, Lonnie here. Today I want to talk about what is a time series database. In my last video, I talked about the industrial internet of things. And in that video, I talked about how the plants had evolved over time to collect data and start using this data to do a lot of different kinds of things. So uh, at the core of uh, any kind of uh, industrial internet of things solution is a database. And specifically, what you'll normally see is a time series database. So I wanted to explain a little bit about what a time series database is and maybe how um, it's different than what you would think about in, with a normal database, like a SQL database or something like that. So a time series database is essentially a database that's purposely built to store time series data. Time series data that uh, is typically coming from some type of sensor. Sensors are, are like a like a humidity or temperature or you know some kind of flow meter or something like that power meter anything that's producing data um, over any over uh, continuously that data will have a value and it'll also we want to store a, an appropriate timestamp so a value and a timestamp that pair together makes a, a data uh, one data set time series data is proficient and optimized to store that data and then to allow for quick retrieval of that data. Like I said, highly optimized and they're designed to work at scale. So if you have a lot of data that you're collecting, let's say there's, you have thousands or hundreds of thousands or even millions of sensors. Like for instance, a utility might have a meter reading for residential meter reading, um, smart meters where they're reading uh, remotely uh, all the power that a home consumes, the um, gas that a home consumes over any given month. That could be maybe a 24 hour reading every 24 hours a, a reading is taken and then that data is stored somewhere. That would be a time series database is where that data is stored. So you can imagine uh, how, how um, large these systems can become. So not only do we have a lot of uh, data points, streams of sensor data coming in, but also um, there's can be a long history of data. So I've seen databases that go back to that have data in them for over 100 years. Um, now that data was not uh, all collected automatically and stored in a time series database. In the, in the beginning, a lot of that stuff was just manually recorded and somebody went and actually um, enter that data into a database. But you can imagine if you have millions of sensors and you're storing that data over any kind of significant amount of time, you know, maybe a year or two years or three years, you can see, uh, you can imagine these, these databases can be qu come quite large. So it's important that they can handle the scale of, of these systems and um, the amount of data that's coming in at any given moment. So there are uh, three parts that I would that I think about when I'm talking about a time series database that they have to be able to um, provide some kind of a solution for. One is how do you get the data from the sensor into the database? Um, that's typically referred to as a data input or a data stream or a data in ingress. So there's a lot of different terms that are used to describe that, but essentially sensors are going to speak some kind of a language or protocol. And that's a uh, standard that the sensor um, is able to send data out to some kind of uh, an endpoint, in this case, be a time series database. So the time series database has to be able to uh, speak the language of the sensor. So time series databases have to be able to speak multiple protocols if you're going to have um, a lot of different types of sensors coming in. Okay, the second thing a time series database has to be able to do is it has to be able to store the data somewhere. And this is um, typically at some point is going to be on a hard drive or some kind of uh, uh, electronic form format, uh, SSDs or hard drives or something like that. And that data is going to be retained for a certain amount of time uh, to make it available for people to use that data or for systems to use that data. So the data storage and how that data gets arranged inside of the, whatever the media is it's stored on is typically kind of like uh, when people think of a database, that's, that's where you get into the engine of the database, how it stores that data, how it's able to index it and quickly retrieve it. Um, quickly, quickly uh, bring in large amounts of data. So all of those things are kind of in the in the core 
uh, engine of the database. So storage and how it's optimized for, for um, data retrieval and things like that are another component of a time series database. The last part that the database has to be able to provide is data egress or data output. So a system is going to make searches and queries on that data, um, wants to do some kind of analytics on, it, on the data, that data is gonna be pulled out. So these three components, um, ingress, storage, and egress are all um, you know, needed for the system to work as a whole. And each part has its challenges and, um, and difficulties it has to overcome. Okay, so the other thing that makes time series databases a little bit different than what I would say you would see in a typical database is that they have um, some features that are pretty common. One is that the data, as it's getting stored, it typically will use some, some type of a compression routine because there's so much data coming in that uh, you can't really, uh, it's, not, it's not practical to store every number and every value, every timestamp. Um, without compressing it in some way, shape, or form. So typically there's some kind of a data compression routine that happens to optimize the storage of that data. The other thing is the number of protocols that are supported. Um, time series data, um, typically uh, databases will, will need to be able to talk to a lot of different sensors, as I said earlier, and um, being able to support a wide range of standards and standard protocols is important. And there's various ways that um, that can um, that uh, databases can be set up to be able to handle those types of things. The last couple of things are one is uh, interpolation, data interpolation. So it's very normal when um, when you're querying for a data set that you're going to have a start time and an end time, and you're going to retrieve a data set. There's this feature that, uh, that is really common, it's called interpolation. And interpolation just means that um, if I retrieve a data set, um, there's, a, uh, there's a lot of different ways that I could ask for those values. One is I could say, give me all the values that were actually collected from the sensor. The other one is I could say, give, the va give me the values at certain predetermined times, like maybe every 10 minutes or on the hour or every 24 hours. That's called an interpolation. And typically databases, uh, time series databases will provide that as kind of a native feature so you can pull the data out and have the data looking uh, uh, like uh, uh, how you, you can have the data lined up exactly how you want it to be lined up. The last thing is uh, analytics. Analytics are a huge part and analytics at the database level is also considered normal. Um, things like doing rollups where you're going to add up, uh, give me totals for every 24 hours, or give me averages, or give me the highs and lows over that period of time. Those are all super common, and you typically want to see those as built into a, a time series database. So in summary, a time series database really is this purpose-built database that's used to store this time series type of data, um, timestamps and values. It seems very, very straightforward. Um, and simple when you almost say it that way, but there's a lot of complexity and subtleties involved in what a time series database does and why if you're storing that type of data, you really wanna use a database that's designed to do that. Every database has its strengths and weaknesses, and for time series databases, its strength is really to be able to get that data in, uh, stored in an optimized way, and then allow for it to be retrieved and analyzed and um, interpolated as needed by the user or by whatever system might connect to it. And performance is the name of the game because we're talking about doing this uh, not for a few hundred points or a few thousand or million values. We're talking about massive amounts of data where I've seen databases that are bringing in, producing a gigabyte of data uh, you know, every hour. So that could be like 24 gigabytes of data. Uh, in a 24-hour period, so you can you can see the size of this size of these data. This these these databases can become um, how to manage that data, how to manage uh, the size of those data sets. Also gets into some of the uh, functionality that's provided out of out with these types of products. All right, so that's it in summary what a time series database is. Just wanted to touch on that uh, since I talk a lot about it and, and I go over all kinds of things in my videos, just wanted to um, explain really basic what a time series database is and why you would um, encounter one or why you might need one. My name's Lonnie, thanks, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.